welcome back to the Berean workshop. Yes. And um, today we are going to talk about the um, transformation triangle. Mm -hmm. yeah. My name is Tolu. This is Mululi. This is the Berean workshop. And thank you once again for uh, joining us and uh, spending some time with us today. So what's the transformation triangle and why are we talking about this? Mm -hmm. um, we have dropped a lot of videos a lot some content around how we harmonize our faith and our finance and how we harmonize our faith and family, family. for me for us yeah. <laughs> the whole idea of the series is making sure that as we follow christ we take up this offer that he gives us he says anyone who follows me will not live in darkness yeah because they will have the light yeah. of life yes john 10 10 says if you um he, he has come to give us life and life more abundantly yeah. so these are promises that come with following him yeah and so they, they love Christians out there who will say, you know what, um, I'm following Christ and my family situation hasn't really changed. changed yes. I'm following Christ and my financial situation hasn't That's changed. So the question is, is the transformation working? Because following Christ has levels, right? So there's yeah. a justification, yeah. which is really the forgiveness and taking on Christ's righteousness and claiming mm -hmm. the freedom that comes from believing him because he's paid that price. Yeah. That's justification, which is like you're not guilty. It's a legal term, yeah. meaning you are you are no longer guilty. It's it's instant. Mean? Absolutely, yeah. it's instant. Yeah. It's instant. Mm -hmm. So once it once the just we don't stop at justification. No. We then need to go to transformation. That's why we need to talk about this transformation triangle. Yeah. Let me let you change chime because I can see you already no, no, offload. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just equally excited. I think, yes. like you said, the transformation uh, triangle is all about taking what we have learned and now actually producing results. Producing so it's, results. Yeah, it's the process yeah. of now that I know, what do I do? What's the next step, you know? Mm. And this is this is what it's all about. So hopefully it will be exciting, and we can look at this in depth with a bit of scripture there and Absolutely. a bit of examples as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I mean, I've, I've I look around me and I've seen a lot of people and observed, mm. and a lot of people have asked me as well that why am I not getting the results that the Bible promises? I was speaking to someone, a dear friend, and they're happy for me to share this. And we're talking about uh, Matthew 6, 30, mm -hmm. where it says that seek first the kingdom. Matthew 6? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added. And this guy was like, bro, I don't know if this is, if that bit I'm works. Huh? Yeah, I'm seeking. But I'm it's seeking, not happening. but I don't see all these things that are supposed to be added onto yeah, me, you yeah, know? Yeah. So for someone like that, um, that's what's inspired people who are out there saying, you know what, I, I, I go to church, I believe, I pay my tithe, I pay my offering, yeah. um, I, I don't miss church, yeah. uh, I read my Bible, but I'm not seeing those results. Yeah. So this hopefully mm -hmm. will help. Yeah, because yeah. um, I think what we assume is that, or this is what we've been trying to do, is to show that there's actually steps that you have to follow to Absolutely. be able Yes. to get this it's they're like principles so mm. god creates the earth and he says let there be gravity mm. and gravity exists and we have to follow those rules those laws mm. and this is what we want to discuss so it's not automatic it's like you said there's justification instant then there's that process of transformation or sanctification being like god you know growing to be like the lord and getting those results yeah, yeah. so paul in romans 12 says do not be conformed mm. <laughs> which means we have to be uh, intentional we have to be um alert yeah. we need to be aware and mm -hmm. this way the awareness the awareness is the first of the transformation triangle yeah, the so three of the three 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 legs three yeah. pillars of the transformation triangle so awareness is right there at the top if you think about it as a triangle awareness yeah. is right there at the top so paul is saying do not be conformed which means be aware of the script that is running yeah. your life. Yeah. Do not be conformed by the ways of the world. Do not be conformed by your traditions and your culture. Yeah. There's some traditional traits and aspects that align with godly aspects, yes. no doubt, but there's some that yeah. don't, right? Some that yeah. don't. I, I was saying to somebody over the weekend, don't do things just because that's the way it is done. Yeah. Ask the question, what's the meaning? What's the origin what of this thing, yeah. of this tradition? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think when you're talking, uh, you quote in Romans, they say, don't be confirmed, conformed. conformed yeah. I'm thinking of Psalm 1, which mm. is part of our theme. Verse 1 talks about what the godly man, it's a comparison. It's two scripts and it, it compares the godly life or the righteous life with the wicked one. Yeah. And he says, this is what the righteous man doesn't do. Mm. And he's rewriting his script. He says he doesn't sit, uh, what's the first line? So bless this yeah. man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, of the ungodly, the wicked. Then he talks about in the way of the sinner. Yep, he doesn't or, stand in the way of the sinner. He does not sit in the seat of the scoffer. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the scornful. So you've scoff. got you've got the ungodly, you've got the wicked, and you've got the scoffer as well. Those three categories of yeah. people yeah. that really are not 
on the worldly path. They're not, They're not in the path, path that yeah. the Lord's in. Yeah. And he's saying this is what he doesn't do. And he, like you said, it's cut it down to the extremely wicked, the mm. evil, then it's the sinner. And then it's the naysayers, the negative people. Says yeah. He doesn't hang around with those. Yeah. So the first step of transformation, again, is awareness. You know that there's a different path for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, yes. he compares the, I think someone compares the benefits later on. He does, yeah. yes. So it's about, like a tree that's planted yeah. by the rivers of water, yeah. bearing fruit in its season, its yeah. leaf, there's no wither, you yeah. know, those beautiful things. Yeah, and the wicked is like chaff. It's like chaff. It just disappears. Yes, you know yes. So you become aware of your choices. You know that if I take this righteous path, I'll be established. But if I'm wicked or do take that path, then I just melt away. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So the question now, though, is what stops people from having the light bulb moment of that, that yeah. awareness being aroused or raised that, you know, while you raise your awareness to hold on a second, there is a dichotomy, the two paths here, and I yeah. must choose, choose one path. path. Yeah. I'm not just going to wake up and I'm just going to be on the right. I need to intentionally choose my path. Yeah. Uh, knowledge again yes. knowledge. knowing mm. you know this is what we've been hammering for yeah. the last few weeks yeah there is an alternative to what exists there so you don't have to continue with uh in poverty or you know without building wealth so when you say knowledge you're talking about the knowledge of the principle yeah. so there is a principle that you we must choose mm. An alternative. An alternative. I've, I've given you today. You must choose say, yes. life. You know, yeah, Jesus yeah. is saying, well, God is just telling them, you know, these are the options, but you choose life. You choose so life. that's what he wants for you as well. Yeah. So the options exist. But if you don't know that the options exist, then you carry on, you know, uh, in that path, path it's, of the wicked. It's, it's, it's so, so amazing. So we need to be awake. Mm -hmm. I know this whole talk, there's this whole trend of the woke. The woke. Woke, um, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. It is supposed to be sort of like a, a spiritual awakening. Yeah. But with all manner of twisted ideology oh, right so yeah. and again you know this world what we need to understand is this world has um we live in a broken world we do. from a so, christian yeah. perspective we know that because we're seeking truth here the world was plunged into darkness mm -hmm. so if you're spiritually awake without christ yeah. the light that is shining might not be in fact that leads us very very nicely to yeah. matthew 6 22 and 23 jesus says the um the um the light of the body mm. is the eye mm. and if the eye is good the body is full of light, good light yeah. but when we think about eye we're thinking what mm. you know you need to actually do a, a proper study to understand what jesus christ is saying here and actually paul comes to our, our rescue yeah. he helps us out gives us a bit of a clue ephesians 1 18 when he says i pray that the eye mm. of your understanding mm. may be enlightened mm. it, it really corresponds nicely with yeah. with this um matthew 6. so what does that mean the eye of the understanding or the or the or the the um light of the body is the eye so understanding when you have knowledge and the understanding yeah. of who you are who you belong to and what is required of you the choices we need to make yeah exactly. then you your light your body will be full of yeah. light yeah. Yeah. but then jesus said but if the light that is in you is actually darkness, darkness which means the understanding you think you have is not actually of the kingdom no. but is yeah. human made mm. philosophy and human wisdom yeah. How deep is that darkness in you? Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that's the reason why before we can start measuring the results we're getting in our walk mm -hmm. in the Lord, we need to understand if the light in us is actually light or is Correct. it darkness. Thank you. Yeah, because I mean, the rest of the Psalm, Psalm 1, because his delight is in the law. In the law. Of, of the, the Lord. Lord. You know, so the focus remains the correct kind of yes. light in what? In the Lord. And he talks about him, the righteous man, the guy on the godly path, mm -hmm. meditating on that word, the word of the Lord. Mm. And in the actual right, uh, the actual Hebrew is the word Torah. Mm. And it's not talking about or exclusively, you know, like the Ten Commandments. It's talking about instruction. It's talking about the voice of the Lord. It's talking about the principles of God. So that's what you listen to. That's what you're meditating. And it's talking about day and night. And day and night may be literally 24 seven. You know, that's what you focus on. But it also talks about, metaphorically talks about times of enlightenment very you true. know where you're very on the true. top you know you're really enjoying but oh, even when you're down there when you think things are hard, not working that, out yeah this mm. is where you focus so you know that's where the godly path is that's where you become aware and that's what you do so you, you're avoiding all the wrong people you know you're not in, in the with the wicked or the sinners the scornful the negative the naysayers and to replace that you're focusing on the scriptures on the word absolutely. meditating absolutely yeah. David said that your word is a lamp to my yeah. feet and a light, light to my, to my path. path. Yeah. Very consistent with everything we're talking about. Light is illumination. Yeah. It's enlightenment. Mm. And in the world that we're in right now, I mean, I think the biggest 
product or commodity there is enlightenment. That's why everybody's looking for yeah. ultimately, you know, yeah. what is the truth? How can I be more enlightened about my tr my true nature? And only your creator can give you the answers yeah. Yeah. to those questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. only your manufacturer. Only the manufacturer. Yeah. Um, the late um, Miles oh, Monroe. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He said, "If you want to know the purpose of a thing, ask the maker of, of the, the thing." thing. It's only in the mind. It's only in the, of the maker. And and, and, the, yeah. and we are, if we see ourselves as 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 human as products, mm. um, then the um, um, user manual mm. is in mm. the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> that is our, yeah. you know, user manual. That is, yeah, that's the manual. That's the manual because mm. I think there's a, there's a, an acronym for the Bible saying basic instructions before leaving Earth. Yeah. You know that's that's one of my favorite acronyms for the Bible: basic instructions before leaving Earth. Mm. So let's let's talk very quickly about. Um, Maybe one or two steps. How many steps can we advise people if they want to begin this work of transformation? Um, what was the first step? The yeah, first step? I think the first one was covered in the first verse of Psalm chapter one. Mm -hmm. It's who you hang around. Yeah, yeah. Who you hang around. Your yeah, association. Absolutely yeah. important. Yeah. It says the guy is not hanging out. This guy leading the righteous of going into the righteous path is making sure he's hanging around with the right people. Yeah. And he talks about the absolutely wicked. So you don't mess around with mm. those who are absolutely evil. But then mm. he goes, it defines three types of people. Then he talks about those who are sinful. Mm. And then the other ones, uh, the next step is the scornful. Mm. You know, so you're, you're not hanging around negative people. People, people draw away energy yeah. from you. People always are in conflict with what you believe. So you're not hanging around. Even you know, with the scornful, there's another translation that calls it the scoffers. Those yeah, who scoff mock, yeah. they make a mockery yeah. of this of what we're talking the about the whole thing yeah, mm. yeah so anything that you're focusing on don't hang around those, those people. people absolutely yeah yes. but then what do you do instead that was the second step so yeah. that he delights in the law of the lord so he's replaced that bunch yeah. of people with what he focuses on you know i remember peter in the book of acts saying repent which is change your mind and be converted yeah so he's talking about two steps change your mind change and your mindset converted. yeah and then replace it with something you know move on to the next step so you take when you take away one, you fill it with the other one. You know, Matthew twelve, I think forty three talks about demons going out, mm -hmm. and when he comes back and he finds it empty and clean, he jumps back in. So not to, alone either. Yeah, he comes oh, yeah. back with strong with with reinforcement. <laughs> yes, yes, reinforcement. Yeah. And that person's situation is then worse off. They are worse off than yeah. at the start. Yeah. Yeah. So transformation is about actually taking in information from the correct people who you hang around with. Yeah. But that information again, that lifestyle depends on what you meditate on, what you feed on. So you will always have issues. That's why it talks about him meditating at night. Um, I mean, 24-7, uh, day and night. Day and the times night. of when you really, really believe that you're going to get this. And the times in the night when you're struggling, coming to terms with, Lord, is this really, really what you want? Yeah. But you're focused on the word. You know? yeah. Speaking of focusing on the word, which is really what we're talking about when we, say med when we talk about meditation. We as human beings were built mm. to constantly think. How many thoughts cross oh, our minds on a daily basis, right? Mm. So, and that's the reason why I think it's Proverbs 23 that talks about how as a man thinks, so he is. So, he is. Yeah. so we need to be very careful yeah. what's coming in, yeah. in terms, of, in terms yeah. of thoughts. We can't control what's coming in, but we can control what mm. we, we retain in our, in our, in our thinking. Yeah. You know, so that's why it's really important. And then of course, um, the meditation. Uh, so we, we talked just before we started recording yeah. about how naturally, you know, I, when I was growing up, I used to be a warrior. I used mm. to worry about every. Si in fact, I think there was a time I was worried because I had nothing to be worried Warrior. about. Seriously, <laughs> I started to panic. <laughs> my I dad used to, to call my mom a champion. Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah. You know, until I believe the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to the fact that those who have this tendency of worrying a lot, yeah. they're the ones who actually um, are very good at meditation. So if mm. you if you are somebody who is constantly constantly like processing thoughts in yeah. your head you are almost designed to be someone a that champion meditates meditator. champion yeah. meditator yeah. thank you very much for that you know yeah. so yeah. so i like that so the the steps is change your association uh, delight in the law of the mm. lord and then you said here repent and be converted mm. so start to change the way you approach your life mm. take faith choices every time you're confronted mm. with options in mm. front of you how we respond to the people around us yeah. how we conduct ourselves how our attitudes towards the situation around us, yeah. we have a choice. Mm -hmm. We can do it the natural way or we can do it God's way. Yeah. Can I just emphasize Please one do. point? Is, um, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. Yes. So when you're avoiding all those ungodly, but even the commission, the Great Commission, it says, go and infiltrate. So we're supposed to spread this word. Yeah. But we're not of the world. It's like, you know, we're in the water, but we don't let the water in the boat. You know what I mean? That is how... We're meant to conduct ourselves as mm. Christians, you know, and we're supposed to influence our uh, 
our environment by, by not becoming part, part of or it. influenced yeah. by it. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. Mm. So just to um, circle back to the beginning, the reason why we're talking about transformation is because when we become practitioners mm. of the word, which means it is what is our guideline for our lives and our choices, yeah. you know, we, our association actually aligned with the word of God, you know, that we delight in it as well. Amen. What will happen is we'll have a completely different perspective to finances, as mm. we talked about, because yeah. now we're having faith power, faith power in our finances, faith power in our families and other aspects of our lives. Well, yeah. you know, we're really focusing on those two at the moment, which means it will affect the results we see yeah. in those areas. Oh, so at Premier Workshop, that's really our mission. Our mission is to bring all this building materials together yeah. and then you know present it to all of our viewers, yeah. all the people that are associated yeah. with us. What are you building with all of this, this material and this information to get better results? Amen. Because when we look at John 15 again, Jesus says that you know he's the true vine, we're branches, mm -hmm. and that we need to bear fruit. Yeah. That goes back to Genesis 1, 28, mm -hmm. be fruitful. Now, fruit we know, technically speaking, is the, the um, fruit of the spirit, which is love. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, it also builds upon that, yeah, yeah. which means we begin to become the light and the salt yeah. and people can see the results that yeah. we're bearing that, yeah. you know, God has blessed his people mm -hmm. to be prosper, yeah. uh, to, to be prosperous, I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're, impactful. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. if you're out there and you're thinking, well, how do I begin to see these results? Well, be ye transformed. Amen. This is what we're talking about, the transformation triangle. Yeah. What's going to add to that? Yeah, it's going to add uh, meditation is very clear it's just you're not meditating on nothing it's not an open mind <laughs> you're actually like it says you meditate on the law you meditate uh on the things that mm. uh, focus i mean it's, it's it's focusing your mind on something that gives you good value yeah. to your own life you can focus on the negative and obviously that produces results like what god said to joshua said if you meditate on your law you have a specific Pro, uh, prosperity you'll prosper yeah. in a very particular way so uh, what you focus on is very very important what you meditate on is very very important make sure it's the law of god good good spoiler alert we're going to talk about addiction at some point mm. and perhaps we will draw on some of the principles here yeah because when we meditate on the law it really helps us in the transformation process does, to move yeah. away from addiction into where god wants us right. to be god does want doesn't want us to be addicted by anything. Why? Because mm. when we have addiction in our lives, that means something else is in control it's of our lives rather than God. And so meditation plays a huge part. Absolutely. A huge, huge part. Yeah. I'll share something very quickly about my own struggle with, 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 with addiction and we'll go a little bit deeper when, yeah. we, when we talk about we'll it. Well. One of the scriptures that I use that I continue to meditate on over and over again when I had those battles and struggles and wrestling in my mind mm. about you know, why shouldn't I continue with this habit, mm -hmm. the addiction, which we'll go into later on. The scripture I, I really sort of like lean into was the one from the Beatitudes where yeah. it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, righteousness. for they shall be filled. Yeah. So I was just thinking, so if the, my Lord, who I've given my life to, tells me that I'm blessed if I seek righteousness, which is living life mm. God's way or seeking God's yeah. way in everything that I do and I'll be filled, then that should be my goal. So I would meditate on it. Any, anytime I was drawn towards that addiction, mm. I would just okay. meditate yeah. on that scripture wow. and ask myself, this thing, is it righteous? Mm. It has to if it isn't unrighteous, it has to go. Because I, I want to be hungry and I want to be thirsty mm. for the things of God. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy the addiction bit. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to pour out on this one. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that discussion. Yes. Here we good. Yeah. Right. So we have talked about the first triangle, which is the awareness. We've mm. covered the other two, yeah. um, which is mastery. Because once you have the awareness, then it doesn't stop there. Yeah. You could be aware yeah. about Bible principles that you need to apply to your life, but you, we need to master You them. need to increase. You need to become the master of yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. So practice brings mastery. Yeah. And that's the reason why, you know, it talks about we will practice. Mm. You know, when we delight in the word, in the love of the Lord, and then we practice it day and night, mm. we meditate on day and night, it's, it's going towards our mastery. Yeah. Then you get planted. Yeah. <laughs> so the righteous yeah yeah i'm gonna enjoy this amen very good amen. very good any final words no 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 just looking forward to the next two so we're gonna hit you know so much what we we've covered here um so it's all good we might even need to do a part of this awareness because you know we didn't even cover the idea of the parable of the sower yeah. which is a very powerful parable around this thing we're talking mm. about because the guy who the seed fell by the wayside I was thinking about it today and I, and I got a picture of a guy, of a person, yeah. guy or girl, whatever, being in a place, could be church, in a gathering, where the word was being spoken, mm. but it fell by the wayside. Why? Because they didn't pay attention. Yeah. Yeah. Their minds were elsewhere. Right. 
So even the seed that fell by the wayside, the bird came, picked it up, and yeah. disappeared. So yeah. it never made an impact in the life of the person. And remember, the, the ground is the, the heart. heart. Yes, yeah. So this person was probably in church or in a gathering, and nothing actually yeah. got to the heart. So remember, we always talk about the toughest journey in life is from the head to the heart. Oh, yes. Because when it gets to the heart again, like Proverbs yeah. 23 says, we should guard yeah. it, we should be very careful. Because that's where all the that's transformation true. begins, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So I will use that as a conclusion. Uh, we've talked about the transformation triangle. Molili and I are looking forward to touching on the other two mm -hmm. um, next time. Mm -hmm. Thank you.